My career in nanotechnology has, I think, been very interesting. I've been working on this subject now for more than 35 years. So I defended my PhD thesis in 1987, and then I've been kind of devoted to nanotechnology and its applications in the society. And I was fortunate enough to be at a place at that point of time, Lund University in Sweden, which started, or I was part of starting a real new system for nanotechnology. We were one of the pioneering uh, entities in the world. So we had principally shared things together with UCLA in, 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 in the United States and with Riken in Japan. So we were three parties started to engulf in this kind of new kind of vision, how to put nanotechnology into operations. So I myself, I concentrated to a big extent to electronics and to biosensors, which was very kind of rudimentary at that point of time. And then with time it has developed a lot. And also part of the big European networks that were created at that point of time, really putting, let's say, nanotechnology, nanoscience into the field of operations. So it was an amazing period of time. It was a time where some of the Nobel Prizes that are related to the field of nanotechnology was also awarded. So it was, a, I think, a time full of enthusiasm and a lot of creation and co-creation. And to work together was really essential. When, when we kind of started with the nanotechnology, we were more oriented towards the electronic applications and less about, let's say, the positive negative consequences for society. But with time, we started to engulf into these areas as well because we needed it for necessity. And the only way to handle this thing is to, um, I would say, use what we call our scientific social responsibility, to articulate, to speak about it, right? not to hide it, and to be very open and speak and say, well, we don't know everything, there are no answers or everything, but we do the things in the very best way. So I think one of the really important steps was that I participated in some conferences in Paris, and then it was about nano-risk. And after that conference, we changed that to nano-safety, because it's not about the risks, it's about the safety. I mean, we are full of risk all, I mean, we go out on the street, we can be hit by a car. If we drink too much water, we would die. So there are a lot of risks, but we need to work with the safety concepts. So I think this kind of translation from risk to safety was also a major contribution to, to the field. When I came to INL about eight years ago, INL was here in all its beauty. So I, I used to call it like an uh, unpolished uh, gemstone. And I think we have been able now during these eight years to put things into operation. I mean, now the house is full of people. We have 450 people roughly from more than 40 different countries, which is a big, big difference, of course. But the real major achievement is to, I would say, the growth from these, let's say it was less than 100 people eight years ago, to grow from these 800 to more than 400 and still keep the kind of family spirit, the family binding. I think this is a major achievement. I think it comes because INL is an intergovernmental organization and that gives all of us a certain identity, of course. But I think it's a, it's a tedious work to really try to communicate, bring out messages, invite people, do co-creation, be very open. Then when it comes to science, of course, there's a tremendous achievements. I mean, now we're working in six different kind of areas, all very important for society. And here I think our kind of engagement in, in making summits, like our annual INL summit, which is a high-level discussion between not only scientists, but also politicians and other people in the field, businessmen, etc., to really put our science and research into some larger perspective. I think it's crucial to kind of complement what we do in our labs on a daily basis, but we having this kind of hope that, well, we are working for the better of society, working for creating something that will actually have an impact in society, brings us all together and we can then do what we like the most, explore our interfaces, whether that is between people or between things that we're working in on materials or substrates, surfaces, etc. And all these things create this feeling, which I think is one of the major achievements. We have really good technologies when it comes to magnetic sensors. We're probably one of the best in the world on magnetic sensors. And these sensors are becoming an even more important ingredient in everyday life. So now all things around us have sensors or something that measures some property, temperature, radiation, whatever. And these sensors is actually the realm of nanotechnology to be able to make these sensors with a very small footprint, 
not because we like them small, but because when they're small, they require less energy. So it's very sustainable for the future to put these sensors there, giving us information back so we can take a better decision. So everything related with more personalized stuff. I mean, we can have personalized food, personalized medicine. The healthcare is going through a major innovation now, being more digital healthcare. And it goes for, for the rest of society. Now we have electrification, all electrical cars, all the batteries. So all is kind of connected and computers on wheel, that's the car. So we are all, everything is becoming small computers. And all of these data, it comes from a sensor, something that is made by nanotechnology. So I think the combination of art and science is not only what I think, but we see it from the United States, where they have the STEM education, now becoming the STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. So art is there to be together with science, for sure. And I think our first steps here at INL is really the first steps. It's, it, I would say it's not even half cooked. We just started to cook or prepare the meal. But I think the impact inside INL has been really great. So in the beginning, our research were a bit maybe skeptical about this, and now they are kind of all raising their hands saying, oh, can I have an artist next time? So they see the power of this, because it's interesting to expand your horizon with someone that has the kind of artistic way of thinking about subjects, but also the way to articulate, the need to express, and not to write it in with letters, making words, but to express something that brings a sensation to the person that looks on this. And I think the arts will become an inevitable part of science in the future. And we need it because science in itself is also becoming, I wouldn't say more complicated, but the more we learn, of course, the, the, the kind of universe of knowledge is growing. So we need to have models or we need to have pictures in order to understand all these things. And here I think artists can help us to express. So we have a maybe not a unifying, but, but at least a common language that we can talk with each other through images, because that is how our brains are working. We learn a lot about theory. We create an image in our minds about how is this theory actually working? How does it look on the surface or in the material? Or why is it happening in a certain way? So it's all about kind of an understanding, translating written words in a, in a book into something that is a sensation in your brain. And I think artists can help us to further to further kind of develop these sensations and make them even more understandable. And also a message to the outer world, to the other people that are not the scientists. Also part of this scientific social responsibility to articulate science and give hope to the, to the future, to society, that there will be possibilities in the future. I think we saw it now with the COVID, for instance, that suddenly, I would say, science became kind of on every every person's mouth, every every politician was speaking about the possibilities to make vaccines very quickly, etc. So and it was about science really to put messenger RNA into action for the first time in history, taking basis on the foundation being built for many, many years on these systems in science, in research, and then put it into the market in super quick time. So scientific discoveries and applications became, I think, the cornerstone why we could, uh, could take care about the COVID situation. I think science is much more understandable. I think the younger population today will probably have a stronger tendency to pick scientific subjects in school than maybe 10 years ago, when I think it was maybe a little bit different. I mean, nanotechnology per se is not a new technology. It's really about how to bring people together with different competences being collected into one specific problem, which has to relate with the size of a material, because the size of the material gives it unique properties, gives it color, gives it uh, temperature, whatever. So it is the size of the material, and then we need all the disciplines. So nanotechnology is a little like um, convergence and divergence. So it's like a flow, or a roller coaster, if you like, but like a flow, so you bring people together, to concentrate on one particular thing, and we need people from all kinds of disciplines. The people that will use it, the people that understand what to do, what can we develop, what are the limitations, what are the unknown, what are the things we have not done yet, and how can we actually 
do that or, or go into these unknown territories. And then it diverges in society in all kinds of applications that we don't even know. It's, it's immersed, it's embedded in different things, in our computers, in our telephones, in our cameras, wherever, in daily life. It's there, in our fabrics, it's there. We don't really know, we cannot touch it because it's so small, you don't see it, you don't understand it so well, but it's there. And I think this is the kind of nanotechnology as a, as a concept. It's like convergence and then divergence in society and then comes a new convergence point. And this convergence is, coincides with new developments, principally in material science, because it's really about the materials in all kind of dimensions. I think science and research and technology has, I've, I've, been, I've been in that field for my whole life. Right? And I think I'm really passionate about that. And I'm passionate not only about the science per se, but also the prospect of bringing it out there to society. Because I think science and the research activities will always evolve around things that are let's say, related with the societal challenges or demands. So there will be new science, new research dimensions, of course. And the more we know, the more we can do, of course. But really, the translation to, to society is the important thing. And I'm, I'm very passionate about that. I think we will develop many more kind of science knowledge in the future. And I will be very happy to participate in all these things. And probably through more in translational engagement with society. So INL is, uh, I think, a beautiful institution. It's headquartered here in Braga, a beautiful city with a very good living conditions. And I think all of us working here at INL, we could be very proud of that, belonging to INL, being an intergovernmental organization, having the possibility to actually make impact in the world, not being limited by being here in Braga, because we are here, we must be solid anchored here, but then we work Broad. We work with the world and work with the best in the world. And I think INL, we are still, it's only like half cooked. It, it, we're still in the beginning. There's still many, many, we've only been here for about 12 years or something like that, right? So there are many more years to come before INL will be a full fledged research institution with all its capabilities being developed. And I think the people here will have a tremendous future and can look forward to this with a lot of joy and excitement and most important, the kind of feeling of contributing together, because it's together we can make real things happen in the best possible way.